नमस्कार मैं सर डॉक्टर रश्मि सिंह असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बॉटनी श्रीमती इंदिरा गांधी गवर्नमेंट पीजी कॉलेज लालगंज मिर्जापुर वेलकम्स ऑल ऑफ यू इन टूडेज लेक्चर दिस कोर्स कंटेंट डील्स अबाउट ट्रिलोम थियरी एंड इज स्पेशली प्रिपेयर फॉर एम सी सेकेंड सेमेस्टर स्टूडेंट फॉर देर पेपर ट्रेडोफाइट्स दिस ट्रिलोम थियोरी डील्स विद द इवोल्यूशन ऑफ लैंड प्लांट फ्रॉम एक्वेटिक एंसेस्टर्स ड्यूरिंग लेट कैमियन एंड अर्ली सिल्यूरियन पीरियड a number of theories on land plant evolution exist of which this theory is most comprehensive and given by zimmerman this theory is based on fossil records and also synthesizes the major steps in the evolution of vascular plants according to this theory all vascular plants evolved either directly or indirectly from a simple leafless rhinia plant so first try to understand what is tilum tilum is a single nerve ultimate terminal portion of a dichotomizing axis or we can say that it is the point of the most distal dichotomy to the tip of a branch tilums are of two types first one that end is not terminated by sporangium known as sterile tilum and the second one is that which end is terminated by sporangium is known as fertile tilum the connecting axis between two tilums are known as mesomes several times tilums group together to form tilum truss or known as centilum tilum truss or centilum is of mainly two type first one is the phyllaria truss where only sterile tilums are present and second one is the fertile truss where only fertile tilums are present sometimes we found a mixture of sterile and fertile tilums together to form a mixed tilum truss this figure clarifies what we study in the previous slide here you can clearly see that in the figure one that is that tip is not terminated by the sporangium is termed as sterile tilum and other where it is terminated by sporangium is known as fertile tilum when the fertile or sterile tilum group together they form a tilum truss and the connecting axis of the tilum is termed as mesomes it is a figure of simple rhinia plant so in tilum and mesomes so according to zimmerman these tilums are tilum truss of primitive rhinia type vascular plants have been subjected to certain evolutionary process in varying degree among the various taxonomic group first try to learn what are these evolutionary processes mainly five evolutionary processes are known first one is the overtopping second is the reduction third is planation fourth syngenesis or webbing and last one is the curvation so start with the overtopping in this process one of the two dichotomizing branches of the primitive axis that is produced by apical meristem out grows over the other so that one axis become long and another axis become short 
the longer axis further form stem while the shorter or over top branch represent the beginning of lateral branches or leaves now the earlier dichotomy will be transformed into pseudo monopodial branch starting with the dichotomous branch we are moving toward the monopodial pseudo monopodial branching next is the reduction in this process the activity of terminal meristem of each teloma of the truss becomes suppressed resulting into much shorter branches by decreasing the length of the telom and mesons this process is responsible for the formation of microphyllous leaves of the lycopsida and sphenopsida as well as the needle like leaves of conifers as we all aware that meristematic tissues are responsible for the growth of the plant because they are active cells they divide and again divide in reduction process their activity is going to be checked that's why the length of the telom and mesome is not going to increase so that they produce much shorter branches and responsible for the formation of microphyllous leaves now coming to the planation the process of planation caused the telomes and mesome of the truss to shift from a three dimension pattern to a single plane further in between these telomes the process of infilling with photosynthetic and other tissues occur that form the webbing which lead to the evolution of flattened leaf like structure with the dichotomously veined lamina further a very important process syngenesis it is an evolutionary process where fusion of mesome and telome takes place the lateral fusion of sterile vegetative telomes and mesomes resulted into complex anastomosing vascular system in the stem for example polystolic condition in the sylaginella but the fusion of fertile tresses with their terminal sporangia resulted in the formation of synangia of xylotum the closed or reticulate venation pattern of some ferns gymnosperms and many flowering plants are the result of syngenesis of the dichotomizing vein of the primitive leaves the figure shows the curvation process where the fertile telomes become curved or bent downward it involves two sub process first one is the incurvation and second is the recurvation in incurvation downward shifting of the sporangia from terminal or ventral surface of the leaf in teropsida while recurvation involve along with the downward bending of the sporangia here the sponges stalk also bend downward like in sphenopsida so before moving to the moving to understand what role telom theory play in describing the evolution of vascular plants first have a look or recall the classification of pteridophytes broad classification given by smith bold and zimmerman here the classes start with the cell of cellophyta uh, 
moving to the lycophyta, the spinophyta, and pterophyta, where salopsida is the most primitive one, having rhizoids in place of roots, coming with lycophyta, that is differentiated, have differentiated plant body. Moving to sphenophyta, where spongia forms in cone, and finally the most turbidoscular plant, that is the ter teropsida, where sporocarp, we see sporocarp, sporangia, sporangia form sorium, avexial side of the leaf. So let's try to understand how from simple arania type plant uh, we have seen now developed silotum, silaginella, equisitum and tells like plant today. First come with the silopsida where this genome theory can be applied to interpret the evolution of a synangium of silotum. Overtopping, reduction and syngenesis have combined to produce a synangium of silotum. In the figure you can see that initially the overtopping occur and due to overtopping one branch is longer and another becomes shorter converting it to into from dichotomizing branch to pseudo monopodial branching system and after that reduction causes the shortening of the lateral branches and after that syngenesis produces the syngenesis produces Synangium of Silotum. Here the Synangium of Silotum can be seen clearly in the picture. Next to Silopsida, it is Lycopsida, where first planation of the fertile and sterile telome occur. Reduction of the mesomes and in number of sporangia. Reduction where the lateral branches, mastomate lateral branches become shortened due to the stop or reduce activity of mastomatic cells. In this picture you can see here that how the protolepidodendron become developed from simple rania plant because of planation and reduction. In Sphenopsida, recurvation and syngenesis process are involved. In the figure, you can see that how the recurvation takes place. Not only the Sporangia move downward, their stalk also move downward. The equisitum stobulus clearly so that how the recurvation and syngenesis processes are involved in the origin of sporophylls in sphenopsida. Origin of sporophylls and teropsida. Here overtopping, reduction, syngenesis and incurvation are the processes involved. Now you can understand what is overtopping, reduction, syngenesis and in the previous slide we have shown the example of recurvation. Here you find the incurvation where only the bending of Sporangia takes place, not their stalks. Pinnately veined sporophylls with marginal sori developed by the lateral fusion of mesomes. In many ferns, the sori are shifted downwards 
due to incursion process. So, it is clear now that how the five important processes overtopping, reduction, syngenesis, planation and curvation play an important role to describe the origin of our evolution of vascular plants from simple rania type plants. This theory is based mostly on account of the comparative study of the fossil as well as living genera of the vascular plants. It actually explains the phylogenetic relationship between the fossil and the living plants. The five elementary processes like overtopping, reduction, planation, recurvation and syngenesis give a unified concept of the manner in which evolution might have proceeded in the land plants. These processes explain in a simple and lucid way as to how the primitive land plants lead to the evolution of both the simple and the complex land plants of today. But every coin has two sides. If it is of merit, it has some demerits also as given by scientists. Some of the demerits of Tillon theory are written here like it does not explain how a telom like characteristic body has been developed it does not explain the world or spiral arrangement of sporangia for origin of lycopsida it is somewhat hypothetical it also does not provide an acceptable origin of all leafy structure it does not explain the derivation of the dictyostelic condition however what the telom theory says by involving its fossil record it is most comprehensive theory among all other theories proposed by other scientists to explain very well the development of land dwelling plant from aquatic species here are some references from where I have collected this study material. Thank you. If you have any question, please write me on my email ID rashmi at the rate gmail.com.